Hey guys, uh, welcome back to EM378SI Online. Um, just a reminder about what we'll likely see on the final exam is six of these types of problems, uh, one from each category and one might be left out or combined with another. Um, but these are the only seven types of problems you need to know how to do. Um, so we're walking through those as we're going along here. Um, we did a manometer one yesterday and a force on the plane one yesterday. Um, today we're going to do a control volume, but it also doubles or triples as a Bernoulli and another manometer. Um, going forward, I think on on Thursday I'll probably do um, one or two of these, and then over the weekend, whatever I don't get to, that's what we'll focus on in the um, in the finals review session. That'll be my plan. All right, so we have a pretty good problem today here because um, it involves it involves uh, a decent amount of problem solving. So we'll get right into it. So you have water flowing steadily down an inclined pipe. Um, determine the following. The pressure difference, loss between sections one and two, and the net axial force exerted by the pipe on the wall flowing on the by the pipe wall on the flowing water between sections one and two. All right, so part A, the pressure difference, we're gonna solve that by a manometer, or that's a manometer problem. Part B, solving for loss, that's a Bernoulli problem. And then part C, um, the net axial force, that is a that's what's going to be our control volume part. All right, so divvy that off a little bit. So for part A, um, this will be section one, and then we have section two over here. And so we're going to define um, the heights that we have going on here. So between this point and this point, our height is going to be 5 times sine of 30. Oh, let's see if I can get that to focus a little better. Alrighty. So 5 times sine of 30 here, right, because we have this angle here and a distance given there. Between this point and this point, we're just going to call that H. And then we're given between here and here is 0 0.5 feet. I'm going to go ahead and just convert that now. So similar to what we did yesterday, we're just going to start at one point and then work our way to the other point. So point here that we start at, that's going to be just pressure one. All right, and then we're going to go down in pressure. So add, um, we add our distance. So five times sine of 30 multiplied by whatever fluid we're moving through there. Um, specific gravity or specific weight so that's gamma w for water and then we're going to go down again h in our um h in water so gamma w and then here we're going to go down but this time it is whoops plus 0 0.5 times gamma of mercury and then that gets us to this point, or sorry, that should be gamma of water, right? Because we're moving from here to here, that's still water. So that is water. And then moving back up, that's where we're going to go gamma of mercury. And then between here and here, we're going to move up H in water, and that gets us to our point two. So um, this is a little messy, so I'm going to rewrite it down here real quick. So P1 times 5 sine 30, and I'll plug numbers in as I go, um, times 62.4 plus H times gamma water um, plus 0 0.5 gamma water which is 62.4 I didn't plug it in over here because it's gonna cancel out with this term that we have here so 0 0.5 and 
And for gamma of mercury, we know its specific weight is 13.1. Multiply that by 62.4 minus H gamma water. So notice this term and this term will cancel out and we end up at P2. So shuffle your numbers down a little bit, uh, move P2 over here and start subtracting stuff. And what we'll get is P1 minus P2 is 237 pounds per foot squared, which converts to 1.65 PSI. All right, so not bad um, to start off. Uh, I list, I have both of these numbers here. Uh, one, because this is what you get from the calculation, and this is what we're going to end up using in as we're moving forward in the problem. And then this one just, um, PSI is just a more standard unit for uh, pressure and pipes. All right, and then we're at part B, which is the Bernoulli, prop, Bernoulli part. And so we have to decide, so there's a lot of different versions of the Bernoulli equation that we have, or at least a few. And so we have to def decide which one that we need to use. Um, in this case, that's going to be the one that includes the variable loss. Um, it's been a little bit, but remember, one of the versions just has the word loss as a variable, and that's the one that we're going to use here to make sure we can solve for what we want. So pressure out over rho plus V squared out over 2 plus G times Z out equals pressure in over rho plus V in squared over 2 plus G Z in minus loss. And what we know about um, velocity at 1, it's going to be the same as the velocity of 2 by continuity. Right, there's no change in area or change in flow, um, so they're going to have the same volume there. So the difference between these two um, is going to be zero. Right, so we'll shuffle this around to solve for our loss variable. And then also um, plug values in it. Well, we won't plug values in yet. But um, so P1 minus P2 over rho plus V1 squared minus V2 squared over 2 plus G times Z1 minus Z2. So our loss, so difference in pressure, 237 um, pounds per foot squared. Density of water is 1.94 um, slugs per foot cubed. Um, the difference between the velocities is zero. Um, acceleration due to gravity, 32.2. And the difference in elevations is going to be 5 times sine of 30. All right, and so we get that our loss is 203 foot-pounds per slug. So that's part A and part B. So now we start part C, which is the control volume part. So whenever we're doing a control volume, we want to define um, what it is we're looking at and all the forces that we're dealing with, right? So we draw ourselves... So, so we have our sections defined already, and we're just going to seal off this part of the pipe here. And so we ask ourselves, what are the different forces that are um, acting on this, acting on what we have going on here? So first I'm going to, oh, one sec, that I was going to sneeze, but I didn't. All right, first we're going to define our coordinate axes. We're going to, go, going to go at an angle just to make our lives a little bit easier. So we know we're going to have some sort of reaction force, Rx, or R sub X. And then since this is since this is a vertical pipe, right, it's flowing steadily down, we're also going to have a weight. Call that W. And that is at an angle of 30 degrees with this um, inclined surface that we have here. So that's all of the 
forces going on kind of on, on the inside. And then what we want to remember on either of our ends of flow, we're going to have three vectors that we're going to include. So there's going to be a velocity vector that is in line with the flow. So we have V1 and V2. Um, and then we also have a normal vector which points out from the controlled surface. Call that N2 and call this, I'll draw, I'll draw it up here, N1. Um, if I wasn't so cramped for space and it wouldn't look so busy, I'd write it kind of down here. Or maybe we'll just, there's a better idea. All right. So we have Rx, weight, um, and then, so here's velocity 1, here's velocity 2, normal 1, normal 2. All right. So next thing that we're going to do, or the third, the third vector that we have to include is a force called P2 times A2. So that is the pressure times the area. Um, and that's always pointing into the control surface. So on surface two, that's pointing on the inside. On surface one, that's pointing in the opposite direction, but still into the controlled surface. And then then we'll start solving for stuff down here. So what, what, what we have to remember is that the equation that we're going to work with looks a little bit weird, but things work out anyway. All right. So there are two parts to this equation. On the left-hand side, we have the sum of forces. And on the right-hand side, we have this integral thing that we're working with. Um, so we're going to sum up all the forces, and then we're going to work with the integral. So starting with the sum of forces um, in the x direction, right, with x defined along the plane, we know we have Rx, and then we have some component of this weight along that x-axis, and that's going to be a positive w times sine of 30. And then we have these P pressure times area vectors here and here. Both of those are forces. So we have um, plus pressure one times area one, and then minus pressure two times area two. And yeah, and then once we, we're, we're gonna look at continuity and stuff and it'll um, look a little bit clean that way. And then for this integral, I'm just going to write the integral part up here. Um, we have two parts to this. There's uh, from control surface 1 and control surface 2. So from 1, we have V1. I'll write rho out here. So V1 times our V dot N. Um, remember that for the dot product, you're just multiplying the... Um, it's the multiple of the two of the magnitude of the two vectors times the angle between them, the cosine of the angle between them. So for, um, oops, that's supposed to be two. All right. So for, what am I doing here? All right. So for part one or for surface one, which is up here, we have n one and v one acting in opposite directions which means that their dot product is going to be negative. So negative V1 is what happens there. And then we have multiplied by, since our area is constant, dA just becomes pi over 4 times the diameter. And then we do the same thing for the second control surface. So rho times V2. This time for the dot product, they're... Um, moving in the same direction, the normal and the velocity vector. So we just multiply by V2. And then the pi over 4 times 